Bro, this is how desperate Budweiser is. They had Walmart move their products right to the front entrance of Walmart. Walmart. And look. And look. And look. Right by the cups, not a single package taken. What's all this Bud Light stuff about? Hey, babe, give me a beer. You know what I mean. Thank you. Hey, babe, one more beer, all right? Hey, one more Bud Light, please? Hey, babe, one more Bud Light, okay? <laughs> sure thing. Thank you. Hey, JR, how's that Bud Light taste? Pretty good. Oh, damn. Uh. Bro, that's what I'm talking about. Motherfuckers just want to complain about something. It ain't serious. Bud Light been the same. No matter if I got a rainbow on it or not. Like, just drink the damn beer. What the fuck? Uh-uh. Yo, can you toss me a beer? Yeah, I got you, bro. Here's a cold one, bro. All right, guys, so we got to talk about another woke marketing executive that works at Anheuser-Busch slash Budweiser slash Bud Light getting canned, getting canned because they decided to sponsor influencer or transgender TikToker Dylan Mulvaney, a, a person who uh, <laughs> you really can't talk about anymore on YouTube. Um, but you know, hey, hopefully this video will be okay. I'm just talking about business, right? Uh, but you know, hey, um, this comes after uh, Bud Light canned uh, another marketing executive, Miss Alyssa uh, Hirenshell, who a lot of people believed were responsible for this ad campaign in the first place. The decision to sponsor an individual that conservatives see as a direct opposition to their values okay and um people say that because there's a video floating around on the internet of this market executive basically talking about how bud light needs to get away from fratty culture okay they need to try to appeal to young people more uh by uh being more diverse and inclusive aka being woke right aka you know marketing things like black lives matter lgbtq going political right because that's what a lot of these big companies in corporate america believe they believe that the only way to market to young people is to be overtly political okay to be overtly woke okay and bud light slash anheuser-busch who has traditionally been a conservative company uh is facing backlash from their core customer base because the customer base feels disrespected right they disrespected the customer right they decided to bite the hand that feeds them because they believe that they're going to make more money in the future by targeting young people and one of the reasons why this boycott is so important in my opinion is because this is not just what bud light thinks this is what all of corporate america thinks right that is why they're going woke they're not going woke because the people that work there are woke right even though a lot of them are woke and that could be a part of it but they're going woke because that's where they think the money's at, right? They believe that young people, aka the target demographic, they are the consumers of tomorrow because we're currently experiencing the largest transfer in wealth in history that we've ever seen from the baby boomer generation to the younger generation, Gen Z. And that is why a lot of this stuff is happening because these companies want to acquire young people as lifelong customers because they are inheriting wealth from the older generation, okay? That is what is happening. These companies see that. All of these companies see that, right? Um, and some people, you know, in the comment section, they say, well, what about ESG? This is all about ESG scores, right? And my response to that is that, okay, well, what do you think ESG is about, right? What do you think? Why do you think companies like Vanguard and BlackRock are creating ESG funds, right? The, the reason why they're creating these environmental sustainability and governance funds that have these overall woke and liberal principles is because young people care about what they invest their money in okay i mean this is something i dealt with when i was working in the financial services industry is people uh having questions about the funds and what those funds are invested in making sure that they're not investing in 
companies that, for example, don't support gun control or something like that, right? I mean, that is an actual real thing, okay? So these funds are designed to be an attractive product for young people who, again, like I told you guys, are inheriting millions, billions, trillions of dollars overall in wealth from the older generation. And again, all these companies know that, right? So these ESG funds are a solution to, hey, we have these funds that are invested in all these companies that agree with your woke ideology, right? With your far left progressive ideology. Hey, put your money here with us, okay? This is why Vanguard is doing it. BlackRock is doing it. Fidelity is doing it. Swap. This is why all these investment firms are doing it is because young people are inheriting wealth. OK, and that is why most of corporate America is going woke is because they know that young people care about politics. OK, however, this boycott is important because it has to show corporate America that hey, you can market to young people all you want, but you're not going to be able to get away with being overtly political and embracing values that are in opposition to traditional american values which is exactly what bud light tried to do when uh <laughs> they put out this marketing campaign and people got pissed off okay so like i said more heads are rolling at bud light uh over this and i want to read about it because again um this is showing that this that this boycott is in fact working so let's get into it daniel blake who oversees marketing for anheuser bush's mainstream brands has taken a leave of absence following the backlash from the dylan mulvaney bud light advertising campaign as breitbart news reported bud light vice president of marketing alicia hirenshell had already taken a leave of absence from her role in pushing the ad featuring dylan mulvaney now it appears her boss daniel blake has joined her okay so this is interesting because she was the vice president of marketing at um, Bud Light, okay? And she's taking a leave of absence. Now, Daniel Blake seems to actually work for uh, Anheuser-Busch, okay? So the parent company, the company that owns Bud Light, that distributes Bud Light. Um, it seems that they're canning him as well. Now, in regards to what the definition of can means, uh, that remains to be seen because... Um, them both taking a leave of absence suggests that this is something that is forced. However, they haven't made a concrete decision yet on whether to actually fire them. This could go one or two ways. They could take this leave of absence and eventually be fired, right? Which is what I think most people want. Uh, or they could take this leave of absence. Everything could calm down. Okay, wait till the boycott is over, which they, they believe. They believe that conservatives are weak, right? They believe that they're not going to stick it out. And then as soon as everything dies down bring them back, and then pretend like nothing happened, right? Uh, that's how this could go. Either way, we still have not received an apology yet from Anheuser-Busch or Bud Light in regards to um, their, um, you know, very, um, you know, unwise marketing campaign decision, okay? Uh, haven't received that yet, but re have received some, you know, fake patriotic ads in order to try to get people back into the fold. Quote, given the circumstances, Alyssa has decided to take a leave of absence, which we support. An Anheuser-Busch spokeswoman told the Wall Street Journal. Daniel has also decided to take a leave of absence. Wow. <laughs> the heat must be on inside that company, right? They must be panicking. They must be panicking inside that company. Because, again, at first they told us that, no, 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 this is a low-level person, right? This wasn't a decision made by executives, right? This is a low-level employee. And I said from the beginning, I was like, no, this is not a low-level employee decision. You're not handing out a sponsorship like that to somebody as controversial as the person they handed the sponsorship to without an executive signing off on it and saying, yeah, we're totally fine with that, right? So again, if it was just a low-level guy and they went rogue and did this, then I don't think you're firing the executives for that unless there was some failed oversight, okay? Um... But again, I haven't heard about the low-level employee that was allegedly behind this getting fired yet. Haven't heard about that. But the executives are, are basically walking, okay? It's just funny how that works. Sources indicated the two executives did not take a voluntary leave of absence and AB Inveb named a, another executive to replace uh, hiring shell. Yeah, so I mean, of course. Of course it's not voluntary. Of course it's not voluntary. Mr. Blake, who oversees marketing for Budweiser and Bud Light, has worked at Anheuser-Busch for nearly nine years. The company didn't announce a replacement for Mr. Blake, noted Wall Street Journal. Quote, the brewer said 
uh, Friday that Todd Allen, most recently uh, global vice president of Budweiser, would take over Miss uh, Hiring Shell's role. Yeah, she's out. Okay, <laughs> she's out. Okay, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I don't know for sure, but it seems to me, it sounds to me like they're out it, it, at the very least until this calms down. Okay, um, but we'll see. Uh, High and Shell came under scrutiny following the Dillo Mulvaney ad after video surfaced of her on a podcast earlier this year that she aimed to shift Bud Light away from its Friday base. Okay, so we all know about that. Okay, we all know about what she did and what she said. Um, so let's actually read here about the sales because that's what really matters here, right? If sales weren't declining, then this wouldn't be happening. They wouldn't give a damn, right? It's just like Nike. Nike's like, oh, we don't really care about the conservative boycott. We don't care if you guys get mad, okay? Uh, but Bud Light is definitely responding, which means that sales are declining significantly. We won't really know too much about it officially until uh, their next quarterly report, okay? Their earnings, right? To see, uh, you know, what the earnings are uh, for the last quarter. But we you know, do have a little bit of information about what's going on here. And it seems like uh, their competitors are benefiting uh, while Bud Light is, is, is definitely sliding. So let's read here. In the least shocking news of the day, Miller Light and Coolers Light sales have taken off like a rocket as Bud Light continues to uh, get left on shelves across America. What do they say? <laughs> go woke, go broke. Yeah, that seems applicable here. According to beer industry news site Brewhound, while Bud Light numbers have been in decline for weeks, Coolers Light increased dollar sales plus 10.7%, volume plus 5.5%, and dollar share plus 1.5%, while Miller Light increased dollar sales 16.9%, volume plus 11.7%, and dollar share 2.3% for the week uh, ending in April 8th. Can't imagine why Anheuser-Busch's VP of Marketing is reportedly uh, taking a leave of absence while the folks over at Yingling, Cools, and Miller's uh, are throwing parties right now. It's all hands on deck at <laughs> Dylan Mulvaney Light. <laughs> while Miller Light and Coolers are flying off the shelves right now, that same Brewhound report noted that Bud Light posted declines in off-premise dollar sales, nearly negative 7%, volume uh, negative uh 10.7 percent and dollars shared negative 3.7 percent that same week by comparison for the week ending april 1st Bud light recorded declines in dollar sales uh negative 1.6 percent volume negative 6.4 percent and dollars shared negative 0.7 percent according to data quote this will be interesting to monitor over upcoming weeks to see if this slide continues but for now it looks to be rough but not catastrophic consultant dave williams told the outlet quote i have no doubt that certain regions of the u.s and even more so certain markets uh states markets saw sharper declines than others and the deeper we dig the more volatility we see he continued quote we'll be tracking this into uh, next week's data as well which would include the easter holiday weekend and spring break for some markets Personally, I went with Yingling last night at the same bar. I've always slugged Michelob Ultras. So I'm guessing the next set of numbers ain't going to be much better. Yeah, I mean, um, I agree, right? Yingling is what we're drinking now, right? We're drinking Yingling. Um, you know, again, Bud Light is definitely, uh, the, the brand is tarnished forever, in my opinion, okay? I think that when people drink Bud Light, uh, I think there's going to be a negative connotation uh, associated with it from people around them, okay? There's going to be a stigma for anybody drinking Bud Light, and I don't think that's going to go away, right? I think that Bud Light, unfortunately, uh, in an effort to try to expand their customer base, they actually probably ended up shrinking it overall because they turned off their core audience so much, which, again, is a lesson, a marketing lesson to these companies that tend to be more conservative that are thinking about going woke or trying to go woke to appeal to young people that, hey, y'all need to try something different, right? You need to try to appeal to young people in different ways outside of going woke, okay? Because if going woke is the only way you can appeal to young people, then you can kiss your core customer base goodbye. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.